dear investors the quarter 4 result season is progressing only a few sectors have delivered growth most have delivered degrowth pharmaceuticals telecom cement and a few it companies have done relatively better a few large private sector banks have delivered growth otherwise most companies have delivered the growth in the result season till date index companies who have delivered results have seen a big growth of 12% in earnings delivered till 20th of may we do believe this this big growth in earnings could expand as the result season progresses and uh, not so good companies bring out uh, their results at this juncture how are valuation Now FY20 could end at around 483 EPS on the Nifty, which is similar to levels of FY19. Earlier we had expected financial year 21 to be similar or have a small growth. Now with expansions of lockdowns and on account of our belief that restarting would be slow. we expect fy21 to deliver a degrowth in earnings of the order of around 2 to 5% and fy21 eps could be 460 or there about my belief is that fy22 would have a similar growth trajectory over fy21 as pre covid people had expected fy21 to have over fy20 and we could see a over 20% eps growth taking the fy22 eps expectations to 560 levels so on pe valuations we are trading at 19 and a half times one year forward and around 16 times fy22 earnings so the small takeaway is that in spite of the sharp market fall since earning outlook has also fallen uh you know we believe that markets today are only fairly valued on a year forward basis while lower bond yields would make present valuation sustain higher pe levels the current highly uncertain environment warrants a higher risk premium on parameters like price to book we are at close to 2 while long period average is at 2.6 so we are cheaper than any time over last 10 years and on market cap to gdp we are at 54% versus an average of 78% seen over last 10 years again the cheapest level that we have seen so on uh, historical valuation parameters clearly the markets are very cheap uh overall i believe risk premiums could shrink if the market senses a credible cure in the foreseeable future or there is another round of government stimulus or if the country is seen to be winning the covid battle and at the same time a worsening in covid cases would warrant that risk aversion in population remains high and businesses could be slow for more time to come if we look at data points the risk premium could sustain higher for longer on following counts now one the period after march has seen a sharp increase in covid cases we were way behind the world now we are amongst the top 10 countries uh, in terms of active covid cases we continue to see increase in number of cases while many countries in the western world in china and uh, south korea are seeing cases decline and sharply second lockdowns continue to be extended we are in the fourth lockdown in the present there have been some relaxations 
on movement and economic activity has restarted over last two lockdown periods. Lockdowns have a large economic cost. Each week of a lockdown takes away 1.2% of GDP growth and now after seven weeks of full lockdown and two weeks of partial lockdown, it implies that FY21 could see a negative GDP growth of around 2% in spite of the cushion that lower food prices provide and this cushion is uh, you know let's say around one and a half percent third labor has returned to villages so versus last time when this has not happened and you could have restarted production rapidly uh, this has been a change over last one month uh, you know laborers having returned to villages uh, will definitely take time to come back and hence uh, scaling up economic activity fully uh, would take time. Fourth, government has definitely lent a helping hand. It did announce a large 20 trillion rupee package. However, the package comprised more of monetary policy support, some guarantees, some handout to the weaker sections of the society, and some enhanced credit facilities. It did prove short of expectations of the market in general and in particular of the financial sector, uh, which continue to show declining uh, trends after the package was announced. However, there were uh, positives from the package. It did provide a support to the rural economy and uh, uh, infrastructure funding uh, has been established through a test on transport fuel um, and this test could collect on a run rate basis over 12 months around 1.1 trillion rupees. Uh, this is a, a significant positive. Uh, second, uh, the focus on Indian products in the package is a welcome support. We already understand that uh, many companies which were earlier importing uh, a part of uh, their commitment to India are now looking at manufacturing more in their facilities in India. Agri market opening up, allowing uh, price discovery better is, is a welcome uh, thing. It was a uh, reform which was long awaited and there is a, a resolve to privatize mining activity as well. Uh, this was said earlier, they have again talked about it. Uh, moreover, uh, on 22nd May, RBI cut regulated rate by 40 bips, uh, repo, reverse repo, bank rate, etc. to spur lending. It also extended moratorium period uh, further by three months, uh, you know, given the fact that uh, lockdowns have been extended. Uh, more importantly, it has acknowledged the weakness in the economy. So, uh, you know, overall the sense is, uh, you know, on account of these four factors, uh, for some more time in India, risk premiums could sustain at uh, higher levels. Uh, so, while valuations have corrected uh, and they are cheap on historical basis, uh, you know, market could remain volatile on account of high risk premiums in the near term. We should be ready for that. Uh, in such times, we continue to follow the investing check boxes we had shared earlier. Uh, check box one is investing into cash on book businesses versus levered businesses. In periods of lower economic growth, leverage would hurt. Cash on books is an advantage. Healthier balance sheets would enable a business to improve its positioning in the marketplace, which we believe the market will deliver it. Second checkbox is investing into branded businesses versus commodities. Branded businesses would continue to see strong gross margin expansions given weak commodity price outlook on weak global growth scenario. 
uh, if India is delivering a negative 2% GDP growth as per expectations, the uh, world will do worse. And this means commodities will uh, continue to see uh, weakness in pricing. The exception would be commodities like cement, uh, which are local to India, where producers have demonstrated strong pricing power in the past, and which tend to benefit strongly from uh, lower uh, fuel prices. It's a very, very fuel energy intensive business. Uh, within branded businesses, we favor staples versus discretionary. And in discretionary, we favor smaller ticket uh, manufacturers, uh, you know, manufacturers of base model uh, uh, autos, for example, uh, rather than the more premium uh, position manufacturers. Checkbox number three, investing into domestic focused businesses versus export businesses. Uh, India is a faster growing economy. Yes, 21 will be an exception, but from financial 22, we should again be amongst the better countries globally in terms of growth. Uh, and hence, domestic focused businesses could do significantly better versus export oriented businesses. Uh, also, in the post COVID world, expect uh, you know, uh, trade barriers to move up uh, and which will hamper uh, export growth. Uh, exception to this would be pharmaceuticals, specialty chemicals, and maybe IT. And uh, uh, we have some speaking of these in our portfolios. Last checkbox is for financials. You know, the fee-based businesses, particularly insurance businesses, both life and general, are better positioned over lenders. And within lenders, we favor retail-focused lenders over corporate lenders. We had dwelt upon this aspect in our past uh, video as well. How do we expect market performance going forward? Now, if we observe what's been happening globally, we have seen a dichotomy in performance in markets, you know, where there was a benefit of a strong currency coupled with a strong central banker, uh, central bank, uh, in combination with a sharp improvement in COVID situation and in combination with the presence of technology-based businesses in the marketplace. Technology businesses have benefited strongly from uh, the post-COVID uh, scenario. Uh, Internet-based businesses, uh, you know, uh, businesses which deliver uh, food, we deliver essential and non-essential articles to homes through the net have gained uh, market share, have gained mind share, uh, you know, versus physical uh, virtual world is really gaining strength. Uh, similarly, pharmaceuticals, given the uh, state of crisis, health crisis that we are in uh, is is a big gainer from uh, the, the scenario. And markets where uh, tech both, uh, you know, let's say net-based and pharmaceuticals are well represented have done very well or relatively better than uh, other markets where this is less present. Indian stock market performance has since been weaker, we neither have a reserve currency status for the rupee, nor have we controlled the COVID case increases, and nor do we have a large uh, presence of tech in our uh, market indices. 
So uh, overall Indian markets have tended to be amongst the not so good uh, performers. In terms of flows as we had expected last time relative stability in home markets have helped FTIs turn net buyers in India. You know China has stabilized uh, you know emerging markets China is the largest presence it started to move uh, up uh, first and uh, you know uh, uh, the emerging market funds have started to see uh, stability once again uh, which has helped uh, some amount of flows come into uh, India as well we being the other significant part of the emerging market basket. Domestic institutional investors have continued to be uh, net buyers as domestic investors have wished to benefit from lower valuations. Overall we expect Indian market performance over the next period to be more volatile than usual. We, we touched upon this earlier. Uh, while impairment in earning outlook and delays in restoration of businesses would cause a downward pressure. Any hope of a COVID cure would be celebrated. So there are counter forces that market would experience. Similarly, while quarter one FY21 would be a washout quarter and market participants could focus on the same going forward, any further government support would be celebrated. Uh, valuations, uh, you know, to, to my mind, the most important ingredient of all are supportive. Uh, post quarter one FI21, the uptick in the economy is expected to be sharp, okay, after let's say April, May, June, from July onwards. Uh, we should expect to have a YOY growth from quarter three. So quarter two, let it be a scaling up quarter. From quarter three, we should expect YOY growth to emerge uh, by when you know labor who has gone back could come back uh, to work. Given the uncertainties going forward, we continue to believe that investors should come into the market only in a gradual manner over a period of time to benefit from the uncertainty. The revaluations are supportive and uh, that's the reason to come into the market in the first place but our whole thought is staggers investing over a period uh, uh, that would be better than putting in one uh, lot. As investment managers, we continue to run our portfolios with businesses which are amongst the highest in quality and have better growth prospects versus most other spaces. Our portfolios do take all the check boxes that we have shared above and we continue to rebalance and strengthen them further. In the past period, we have increased our house exposure to insurance and pharmaceutical businesses and further reduced exposure to NBFCs uh, in particular. So this has been uh, uh, the move in our portfolio. We believe, uh, you know, with some more changes that we are undertaking, we are in a nice position to, to uh, deal with the market uncertainty that we foresee going forward. Thank you. Happy investing.